outdoor panel matrices are a great component for do-it-yourself electronic projects. They come in a wide variety of sizes and a number of makers have been using them for a few years. However, last summer, Emily and Deborah found out that a toy purse with one of them inside was selling for really cheap on Amazon. Building upon the work of Brian aka Witness Me Now, Emily was able to get it working with an ESP32. In this video, we'll go over the steps on how to disassemble the purse, get the matrix out and connect it to an ESP32, and start displaying some images on the LEDs. All right, let's do this. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. They're currently offering a wide variety of deals for the holiday season and the spring festival. Make sure to check out their coupons so that you can save while placing your PCB manufacturing and assembly orders with PCB Way. They were kind enough to send me a care package for the holiday season. As always, I was impressed with the high quality of their boards. One thing that sets PCB Way apart is that they're not a broker. Rather, they're a PCB manufacturing and assembly house. With friendly staff and great facilities, I highly recommend PCB Way for your PCB manufacturing and assembly needs. For this video, I'm going to use an ESP32 in the Wemos form factor. To connect the matrix to the ESP32, I'm going to use a shield developed by Brian, which is available on his Tindy store. It comes with a ribbon cable and all the components you need to interface with the matrix. These and other products are available in my little Amazon shop. I'll leave links both to Brian's shop and my own in the description of the video. Disassembling the purse is surprisingly straightforward. You'll need to open the little latch on the side of it and remove the six screws on the sides using a Phillips head screwdriver. You can then carefully separate the two sides and work with the one carrying the electronics. The electronics are comprised by the LED matrix panel, a power regulator board, and the main controller. We see the little silicon chip where all the default patterns for the LEDs are stored. We're going to be replacing it with the ESP32. We'll start by desoldering the two power cables so that we can detach the LED matrix. We can then move on to soldering all of the components on the ESP32 shield. You can follow along or skip ahead if you already know how to do this. For those of you following along, make sure you have the PCB in the right orientation, but remember that one of the connectors faces downward from the PCB. I also recommend paying close attention to the orientation of both the diode and the electrolytic capacitor. Once I've assembled the top side of the matrix shield, I'll move on to soldering the connectors of the Wemos board.
I'll then go ahead and solder the bottom facing connector and move on to working on the LED matrix panel. On the back side of the panel, we'll need to install a surface mount IDC connector. Double check that the orientation matches the other one already soldered on the board. We'll then need to solder a few cables to the Molex connector on the board. This will allow us to power the matrix using an external power supply and also to route the power between the matrix and the shield. We can then use the screw terminal on the shield to connect both the power and ground lines. Finally, keeping in mind the orientation of the shield, we can connect it to the port on the panel that's labeled in. Then we can connect the ribbon cable from the shield to the port on the panel labeled out. With the hardware assembled, we can now move to the software side of things. We're going to be using an Arduino library by 2DOM called PX Matrix. The library supports a number of panels, and luckily, ours is one of them. The Pixel Purse carries the P6 panel that's 192 by 96 millimeters long. To install the library, we'll jump on the Arduino IDE, go through the Tools menu, and select the Manage Libraries option. We'll go ahead and search for the PX Matrix library and install it. This library depends on the Adafruit DFX library, so we'll go ahead and install that one as well. To test whether everything is working, I'll go ahead and open one of the examples using the file menu. As recommended in the library's GitHub page, I'll go ahead and open up Pattern Test. By default, this example is made for a 32 by 16 matrix. However, we'll need to change the scanning layout to match our own. We'll do this by modifying the parameter for the begin method. Having done that, we're now ready to connect the ESP32 to the USB port of our computer. We'll then select the correct board and port from the tools menu option. And if everything goes according to plan, the pattern should look like on the GitHub page of the library. There are very many cool libraries developed for these matrices. One of my favorite ones is the Tetris animation. One thing to note, however, is that some of them only work for a particular size. In the case of the Tetris animation library, we can open the set numbers example, which was written by Brian, uncommon the constructor for our 32 by 16 matrix, and make a few changes so that things are displayed where we want them to. This example in particular works well with bigger matrices, but not so much with the 32 by 16. Nevertheless, let's go ahead and upload it. And you can see that if we don't change where we want things to be displayed, by default they'll only display partially. The things that we did move around will display correctly and the animation is really really cool. Without making some significant changes on the library, we'll only be able to display for numbers. As Deborah has shown us, that's still okay for building a clock project. I encourage you to give it a try. Now, if you want to display things like animations or custom images, you can check out Emily's repository. She also has three very comprehensive live streams where she disassembled the purse and put the whole project together a few months ago. Those videos were super useful when I was making this one. I'll go ahead and download her repository and open my favorite example, the Eye of Sauron. As this was developed for this exact matrix, I can just go ahead and upload it and watch it display in its full glory. So there you have it. We've gone over the steps for taking your pixel purse, disassembling it, assembling Brian's shield for the ESP32, and connecting the whole thing together to display different patterns on the LED matrix. If you like my videos, I invite you to my Patreon page where you can chip in a buck or two. That really helps me put in more time into the videos and release them quicker. But whatever you do, don't forget to like, subscribe, or leave me a comment.
You can also interact with me on social media. I'm on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, and you can even use the community tab of the channel. Thank you for watching my videos and I will see you next time.